that laugh. I just like to sing, man. That's that North. That's that North Side laugh. Like yeah, I feel, man. I feel like, I feel like he' about to sell me something with that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> like something that that that. No, I ain't even gonna go there. I ain't gonna go there. Yeah. All my I don't do that no more. I don't do that no more. You don't do that no more. I don't do that no more. Yeah, neither do I. Neither do I. <laughs> Cook is in the building. We recording. Yeah. Okay. So. Now that we're recording all across the board, we got good audio, we got good visuals. I just want to do a, a couple of very, very special shout outs before we get started. Latoria, thank you, thank you, Latoria. thank you so, so very much. For those of you who don't know, she is like the secret behind the scenes, the Wizard of Oz, the person behind the, <laughs> the curtain. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yes, bro. She's the one no, behind sure. the curtain of for like sure. anything and everything that goes down here in the city of Houston. Um, but thank you for She's setting the this up. Reason she lives in Oz. Oh, he's singing to you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, Latoria, thank you so much for setting us up. Max, I believe, just burnt off. Uh, but I want to thank the Greasy Spoon, of course, for not just opening their doors today, but for keeping me and my family fed on many, many Sundays. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the oxtails are the no, go-to. For sure, man. So uh, if the kids love it, my, I my, love my. it. I can't wait till this is. I can't wait till this is over. Man, oh yeah. See, oh, yeah. I can't eat before. You know, it's you can't. Gonna, yeah, it's gonna mess me up. Yeah, yeah. No, it, I, I agree. I am a very, <laughs> but I am a very, very sloppy eater. So lunch meeting, I don't do lunch meetings. I don't do. I don't do dinner meetings. I don't do lunch meetings. Might get embarrassed. Right? Cause I'd be like. Okay, how much was that deal again? Like, you know, I got grease stains on the check. It just ain't working. It just ain't working. So, um, but again, thank you to the Greasy Spoon Cook. Thank you so much for all you do at 97.9, Magic 102, and Praise 92.1. Yeah, yeah. And just being a dope, dope friend, bro. From the very, very beginning. <laughs> yes, bro. Um, Ramisha, thank you. Um, y'all got to make sure y'all follow her. I'll shout out her handle, handle later because I don't remember it. Um, again, that's that ADHD. So... Don't be mad at me. Right, sure, Blame man. the head, not the heart. All right. And of course, without further ado, my homie DJ from Jet Life Productions, one of the dopest videographers in the city. If you've ever seen any of my videos online and been like, yo, Dave, that's a dope video. It is because I learned from this man right here. All right. Yeah, buddy. So without further ado, welcome to the first live Still Saved show experience. Yeah. It is going down. Well, we sit down with some of the coolest people on the planet who have some of the dopest stories of change and transformation. And boy, do I have a story for you today. What you think, Cardi? Man. We gonna go down memory road? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We gonna go back, you know, <laughs> and we gonna go forward as well. <laughs> hey, look, it's okay to go back. We're moving forward, It's man. okay to go back as long as you know that we're going forward. <laughs> yeah, what Kirk buddy. Franklin say, your, your rear view mirror is smaller yeah. than your windshield, right? Yeah, so it's only is. meant for you to look at every now and then. <laughs> exactly. Every now and again. But I want you to focus on the forward, but you right? you must. Come on now. Yeah, man. Well, anyway, I'm super, super excited to be able to sit down with you, bro. We've yes, sir, been man. planning this for quite a while. Yeah. Um, you are a hard man to corner, a hard man to track down, dog. Man, that's what they say, man. You know, you know, man, I be busy a lot, man. But, you know, man, um, I had to be here with you, bro. I, I, you know, like you said, we've been trying to do this for a little minute. So, you know, when, when I got the time to pull up, I say, let me go and pull up on my boy, man. Man, I, I want My word, you know, is, is everything. So, you know, it's been a little while. I was supposed to get the book from you and all that. <laughs> So, yeah, man, I had to pull yeah. up on you, man. Yeah, man. Finally got the book. I almost um, gave it away. Finally. I wrote in the book and everything, y'all. Yeah. I was getting ready to pull up on them months ago and just been holding on I to it. I can't believe you was, you was going to get this to somebody else, man. And I you was. talking about let your power fall. Yeah, yeah, no. Nah. That's crazy. Okay, so speaking of that, all right, we got to go there. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Everybody need, need him to let his power fall. All right. But hold up. I really, really want to say this, man. Before we get to Let Your Power Fall, the dope music and, and everything that you got going on. Because, man, bro, you killing it. God is doing some amazing things in your life. Dog, Zacardi Cortez. <laughs> from, the, from that north. All right. I'm going to make an exception oh, oh, and invite somebody from the north side come to this on, platform. Man. Come on, man. Uh, <laughs> since Toby from the SWAT allowed you to come on stage. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. But you've been killing it, bro, from the Stellars, from the uh, imprint... Uh, uh, tour experience, uh, touring with Toby, yeah. like all the endorsements and yeah. the cosigns that you've been getting from folks like Kirk, Maverick City. Speaking of yeah, that, man, man, the Kirk Kingdom tour, oh, I want to talk about that too. Crazy. Yes, bro. Crazy. But you've been killing it, dog. Please, please, please tell us just how dope God has been in these past couple of months. Just that, man. God is the greatest, man. And, um, you know, 
it's, it's really been last couple of years, man. Everything just been going higher and higher for me, man. And, uh, you know, doing those little videos with, with those guys, man, you kind of go viral and stuff, man. And everything just start, the phone just start ringing off the hook, man. So it's, it's, it's amazing. It's crazy, man. Uh, I really been seeing God's hand on me as well, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, man. And I'm just grateful, bro. You know, I'm, I'm really just, I'm humbled. I'm a homebody and I'm just grateful at the end of the day, man. Um, you know, I try to uh, do as much as I can, you know, get it in as many, you know, many cities as I can and stuff yeah. like that. The people, you know, love when I come out, they love to see me, man. And I, I just love that, bro. I think it's a great thing, man. Um, God has really put me in some places, man, and I'm just grateful, bro. Nah, man, straight up, straight up. It's been it's been remarkable. I've been following your IG yeah, and man. and seeing some of the different rooms that you've been in, stages you've been on. Um, I'm proud, dog. Like yeah, being man. from from the H, really, really Seriously, putting on. Man. You know what I'm saying? It makes yeah. me proud. One of the proudest moments I had this past year was the Kingdom Tour, right? Yeah. So going to the Kingdom Tour, I was supposed to be shooting it, right? I was I was in the pit. I was taking pictures. I got all my shots of Kirk and Chandler and Naomi and, and everybody. And then you came out. Yeah. <laughs> you came out and did, was it something, did something about the name? I saw you before. After. Yes, bro. You saw me before. Oh, okay, okay. You saw me before. Okay. Uh, you was rolling with James and um, yeah, I, Isaac. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you came out on stage, right? And I, I kind of knew something was up, right? <laughs> And in the middle of something about the name Jesus, I'm supposed to be taking pictures. I'm supposed to be doing my job, right? <laughs> Cooking them still don't got pictures of you of that event. We, none. Oh, man. Really? Zero. He got pictures Whoa. of everybody else. And the reason, bro, when you started singing, that was unbelievable. I'm talking about 10,000 plus people went bananas, went bro. Crazy, what was that man. experience like? How it did was, it happen, first of all? It was crazy, man. Um, you know, they called me and was like, uh, you want me to come sing? Something about the name Jesus. They told me the whole setup. So immediately I was like, man, this is uh gonna go crazy. Cause can't nobody just sing something about the name Jesus. Really? Like you you have to really, yeah, really you gotta sing channel that your your inner Rance Allen mm. to even attempt to sing that song, man. And I seen the uh videos going viral with Melvin Chris Bill doing it. And yep, yep. you know, um I think I saw somebody else do it as well, but Man, I, I just knew it was going to be great, man. I, I knew it was going to be something. I didn't know it was going to do, like, go viral or anything like that. I just thought, you know, to myself, you know, man, I'm going to really kill this. <laughs> I don't know why they would let me sing something about the name Jesus, but I didn't know all those people were going to be there. I didn't know any of that. So when, when they called me, I was just like, yeah, I'm going to come and, mm -hmm. and kill it. And, and man, it, it just happened like that, really, bro. I'm going to just come and do what I do. Yeah. Right. I'm going to just yeah. come do what I do any in each and every time each I go to whichever, time, whether man. it's five people or, or 10,500, 10, yeah. yeah. man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it to them. You know what I'm saying? So, nah, that's what I love about yeah, you, bro. Because you've been doing this for, for how long, bro? Like, we've, we've been seeing. I started you. singing at the age of five, like for real, man. 30 mm -hmm. years plus. Bro. We got some cosigns in here. Everybody else can. Yeah, for do sure, we have man. a witness? <laughs> yes, yes. No, nah, it's 30 years plus, man. So. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because AV God used to always good. tell me the stories about how he pulled you up when... <laughs> oh, my God, bro. <laughs> it's no lie, man. AV pulled me right up out the audience. Come sing a song, and the church would go crazy for another 15 minutes, and, it, yep. you know, we was kind of stalling time for mm -hmm. people like Sean Mack and Kim Burrell back in those you days. Had to throw, you had to throw the names out there like that. <laughs> yeah, <now>. man, <laughs> you know, RIP my boy, man, Sean Mack, but yeah. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I'll say this, man, before we, we get down into the nitty-gritty, because I really want to go back you know, to them days in Acres Home, right? And, um, but before we do that, man, a lot of people know my story, um, struggling with depression and, you yeah. know, the suicide attempt and a lot of that stuff. When I was going through that, that dark, dark season, there were a lot of tools and things that God put in my, 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 my lap to help me get through. Yeah. And one of them was Let Your Power Fall. Wow. One of them was Let Your Power Fall, bro. Like, I remember crazy, not man. wanting to live. Like, literally, this is it. I'm done. Yeah, I even sure. attempted to end it all. Yeah. And when, you know, as I kept going and, and whatnot, I would put that song on repeat, bro. Wow. And beg. That became my prayer for, for months. Like, even when I didn't feel it, right? Didn't want to go to work. Didn't want to run the business anymore. And we was making, we was making bread, dog. We was doing, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and people were depending on me, not just, not just my family. Um, but that song, I was like, God, if you don't do it, yeah. It ain't going to get done. Right. And I would beg him to let his power fall, bro. Yeah. And gratefully he did. But that song, 
Thank you. If I ain't never had a chance to tell you, I got to tell you publicly, thank you for getting me through that dark, dark time, man. What was it like when y'all first recorded that song? And like, how do you feel when you hear stories like that? Man, um, you know, I'm just amazed. I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by it. Um, you know, that song, uh, Dion Kippen wrote that song. Yep. Dion Kippen is from Connecticut. And um, um, I don't know how, when did he when he wrote it, but um, I was singing that song maybe like in 2006 or seven, yeah. just with my family. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we did it at one concert, and James was there, and James heard the song, and James was like, "Bro, whose song is that?" And you know, it went down the line of all of that. We got the song, and James ended up recording it, man. And I, I'm just grateful, you know, that God you know, anointed me to sing anything, man, you know what I'm saying? And um, to just just get it, get the song across how it need to be across to, you know, the listener, man. And I'm just grateful that, uh, you know, Dion wrote that song. And I'm grateful it happened like it happened, you know, um, because when James finally got his hands on it, you know, James... Oh yeah, is anointed to do what he do as well. You know what I'm saying? To, oh yeah, that 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 talking. Boy, yeah, I'm that, telling that you, talk, man. That, man, that, that you anointed know? talking, man. I'm telling no, you. No, seriously though. So man, um, yeah, man, it just happened like it happened, man. And uh, yeah. Dion Kippen is a is a is a penmanship, he's, man. He's written real. some powerful, powerful anthems. And, yeah, and that's exactly what that was, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's an anthem, bro. As a matter of fact, we did praise in the park a few years ago. Yeah. Again, I was supposed to be taking pictures. My bad, cook. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got the shots on this one, though. I got the shots on this one. I've seen them repost them. They there. But in the middle of the show, I don't know if you remember this, I had to, like, just flat out get on my knees and just take a break. Yeah. And worship. Yeah. Like, it's that powerful, man. It's that powerful. Yeah, man. Um, so with that being said, bro, another thing, because... One more thing I want to acknowledge is the work that you've been doing lately with Toby. How yeah. did that, how how did that happen? Because you know how how uh, how much I love to squat, and yeah. um, <laughs> to see you on stage with my bro. Look, come on, baby, a leaf in the building, um, Elsick High School. To see the North and the SWAT come oh together is God. a beautiful thing. It, but how did that happen, man. man? Toby, my boy, man from the higher D days, James yep. and yep. I, you know James and Toby and all of us, man. Uh, shout out to the Higher D, Pastor Johnson. Um, but we we were back in the Higher D days, man. And you know, uh, uh, Toby hit me one day and asked me to come do uh, follow me, man. Yep. And, and he was like, man, I want you to do this. Do, do, do. And I came in the studio, and he was just you know going crazy, man. <laughs> yes, bro. And um, you know, he called me to do Try Jesus, man. And you know, we just now we just super cool, man. We, mm -hmm. With the boxing and everything, man. Yep. We get it yep. in. Um, we're gonna have to hit the, have to hit the gym one day, dog. Yeah, that's my brother, yeah. man, for sure, man. And uh, yeah. yeah, man, that's my boy, man. I, I, anytime he hit me, he been doing. I miss Coachella. I was supposed to do Coachella. I can't believe it, man. I was so mad I missed Coachella yeah. with him. But yeah, man, anytime he called me, man, it's just you know easy for me to go and you know yeah. Yeah. get on stage. I like singing background too as well. So I love doing BGDs, <laughs> man. If anybody know me, they know I love. Doing background. Does so. that come come from coming from a very large family? Absolutely, man. <laughs> Absolutely. I grew up singing background for my sister, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was Nisha Cortez and the Cortez singers. So yeah, right. So I you, learned a lot. <laughs> like no ego here, bro. Like I'm just I'm gonna play my role, play my part. Absolutely, man. And I, I get a kick out of it, man. I, I really love it. You know, I love uh, you know, the camaraderie, the yeah. the, the the harmonizing and you know, being mm -hmm. able to sing with my, you know. Some people that can sing, you know. Yeah. I like that type of stuff, man. I nah, love man. it. No, nah, man. Uh, do this for me, man, because you've done some crazy stuff, right? You've been around in the game for a minute. You're 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 receiving all the accolades that you deserve, and it's only getting bigger, right? I'm yeah. I'm really excited to see how the Stellars play out. Oh um, my lord! I know you can't probably reveal too much just yet, but I know yeah, yeah. that voting ended on May the first. Yeah. So yeah. we gonna know real soon. <laughs> um, I can't wait to say Stella Ooh, Award winner Zacardi man. Cortez. I feel it in my spirit. I, I feel, feel it. it too, bro. Um, I feel but, it. but but that you got you're touring. The the record is doing great. Um, it looks like you have hit the top of the mountaintop. Everything looks pretty, the glitz, the glam. God <laughs> has showed up, showed out in a marvelous, marvelous way. Yeah. Um, but it hasn't always been this pretty. Not at all. It hasn't always been this easy, this yeah. glamorous. You know, yeah, we ain't always seen the ugly. shiny suits. <laughs> I'm just saying, my bad. Take for me sure, back, man, bro. For sure, man. You know, it still get ugly sometimes, man, you know, it, it, during this journey, man. But, you know, man, it, it, you know. God has brought me from a mighty long way, bro. I, that's my testimony. 
You know, cause, cause, yeah, I, I remember I was at a place, you know, um, like you said, just with depression and just felt like, you know, you know, I was kind of spoiled. I didn't, I didn't really, you know, get to the point where, um, you know, I felt like I would take my life. But man, I remember I, I had a long, long walk. I walked from uh, Greens Point, like a little further than Greens Point Mall to Acres Home. I, it was a I yes. walked that far. Yeah. First of all, let's give it up for him for walking through <laughs> Greens Point. No, I was you like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> was it right. middle of the day? Right, and I was Look, like, I was if like, because it was nighttime, 20, I'd been concerned. You know what I'm saying? What's crazy is I was 20 years. I was like 20 years old. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was like a week before my 21st birthday. Um, man, and, and during that walk, I walked to my best friend's house, and during that walk, bro, I was really beating myself up and really like going at myself, you know, for not. Just doing nothing. I didn't graduate high school. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I felt like I was just going to lose, man. I felt like my life was just going to be, you know, I was going to be a statistic. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. during that walk, though, bro, um, God really was talking to me, man. And um, that's the first time I really felt the presence of God, um, like, fall on me and come in my life and show me what it is he wanted me to do. And what I was really going to do. I had already been singing and stuff like that, yeah, but yeah. I really didn't feel it i really didn't feel like that was going to be you know my way out or the thing that was gonna you know um you know change my life you know and um man um so even though you could sing you was like this, this at an early age you wasn't looking at it like i'm gonna be a singer i'm gonna be a gospel right. singer what, yeah. what did what did you want to do i'm just curious um I, I wanted to do anything bro you know i i, I tried it all you know yeah, of course yeah. i played football and stuff like that and, you know, but I didn't graduate high school. I was pretty good. I was on varsity in 10th grade and stuff like that, but I didn't finish school. So it was, um, I, I knew that wasn't going to work, you yeah. know. You, you, um, if you don't mind me asking, bro, like, what, what happened? Why didn't you finish, bro? Um, I was bad, man. I was a bad kid. And, and like I said, I was spoiled. So I didn't really get, uh, you know, I probably just didn't get beat like I was supposed to or something like that, man, you know. You know, they kind of just let me, you know, do my thing, and I met John P. Key at an early age. Yep, yep. And a lot of times, my mom would send me to Charlotte, you know, as punishment. And that man got a lot of money, man. So when I would, up, I go up there and be living the life. Yeah, that wasn't punishment. It wasn't punishment, and you know, I think that's that's what happened for me, though. Actually, man, that's what turned everything around for me, bro. My eleventh grade year, I was supposed to be at school. Man, I was on tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I just kind of think, you know, music took over, you know. Um, I kind of think, you know, life just started taking over, man. I was making a bunch of money at 17, helping my mama pay bills and stuff like that. So um, once I got 18, and it, it, it happened so fast, you know. Um, once, I, once I turned 18, you know, it, it, was, it was up for me, man. I, 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 I was just not looking back. Yeah, um, yeah. I was just like, yeah, th this is what I'm going to do, you know. And uh, it, it kind of just turned around for me, man. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I didn't plan on not finishing, and you know, um, you know, I was actually decent, you know, uh, academically. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I got my work done, you know, but everything just kind of start turning around for me, and you know, um, but still, once I got to a certain age, um, you know, I wouldn't getting calls and yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, going right. out and making money. So I was really, really, uh, you know, just down. And I didn't think I had nothing. I, right. I, just I ain't thought, had nothing to fall back on. Yeah, it was like, if I ain't get that's, And that's what it was as well, you know. Yeah. If this don't work, like, mm -hmm. what else, you know. And, you know, it's the the talking of everybody else, you know, all mm -hmm. of that, man, you know. and um, Especially if you've done a couple of things with John P. Key already. It's kind of hard to come back to Houston you know, you've, you if you've oh been on God. if you've been on the big stage before, mm. right? And you get paid a certain amount of money, and then you come back home, and it's just like well, oh you, my just, God, you just you just you just cart it. Yeah, I mean, right? well, well, it's hard to come back <clears throat> and not have that fallback. Yeah, not even knowing, you know, when, when I was making the money, man, I I didn't know what to do with it. You know, I could have probably, you know, done anything. You know, I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't, you know, I was giving it to my mom and just. So when when you when you took that long walk, man. Um, and you felt the presence of God come down upon yeah. you. What changed after that? That really flipped you, my whole mindset about, you mm -hmm. know, 
music in general, man. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, God kind of showed me, you know, what he wanted me to do. And um, I remember like it was yesterday, bro. Um, I stopped. I stopped walking because I was tired, but I went to Jack in the Box and got me some water. <laughs> but while I was at Jack in the Box, y'all, this is a, I promise you I know which Jack crazy. in the Box you're talking about, too. I do, I do. I'm not a North Side. I don't frequent the North Side often, but I know exactly which Jack in the Box you're talking about. Sorry, man. Go ahead. I was at Jack in the Box, man, and drinking my water, and I just kind of, I was kind of just chilling at Jack in the Box outside. Like, outside, just, you know, I ain't have no money, so I'm just outside, just kind of for like 20 minutes. I'm just literally outside, y'all. And all of a sudden, I just go into a concert. <laughs> I'm in concert outside. And I'm sitting there talking to the trees like that's my audience. The trees are moving. It, it was just crazy. God really showed me like, man, this is what you're going to do. Stop tripping. You know, it's going to come, you know, um, because like I said, I was really battling myself about music. Like I said, I knew I can sing. Oh, yeah. But I didn't, you know, I didn't think it would get to this point, you know, and, and I just that's that's what really flipped it for me, man. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, God just really showed me like, you know. So, so tell me this, bro, because that was 20. Yeah, You're I was like, yeah, like 20. Okay, cool, cool, cool. It, it, fast track, it's, fi it's 15 years later. We gonna, I ain't going to make everybody do the math, but all right. <laughs> so 15 years later, we know how old you are now, um, or approximately. Um, <laughs> after that, because this is the common misconception, right? We, we, we hear the voice of God, and we, we think, okay, cool, the switch is flipped. Everything is about to get better, right? Mm -hmm. Immediately. Yeah. Did that happen? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> what you mean, dog? Like, he ain't open up all. the heavens and pour down a blessing and yeah. just make all your problems go away? Like, that didn't happen? No, sir. All right, man. come on, dog. Not like, at all, man. I appreciate I mean, you keeping it real. Absolutely, bro. <laughs> Still felt like, you know, giving up, man. Yeah. You know, um, Even with the presence of God. Even with the presence of God, bro. You mm -hmm. know, still trying to find myself. Still confused, you know, even after that day. After that day yeah. Um, you know, I had to... <laughs> wake up again, you know, and, and live the same life that I've been, you know, without the walk. You know, I had to go back home and, you know, get into it with whoever I was getting into it with. And, you know, my mama, you know, telling me you need to get a job and all this type of stuff. What you going to do? And mm -hmm. so I had to go back to life, man. I had to face reality again. And, uh, you know, man, and, you know, God was still dealing with me, man. I'm really overall just truly, truly grateful because man i i didn't try literally tried everything i tried selling drugs yeah you know yeah. what i'm saying i tried everything man i i didn't try to pull a gun and I, I was like man i'm finna go and rob these people man do i really want to do this and uh -huh. just being you know that uh you know challenging with your mind man you mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. it was so crazy for me because i really didn't think music was gonna happen right so right. Thinking you know, that you there's know. a verse that says hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I can see that happening with a lot of artists, creatives, not just artists, too, but business professionals, even people like single folk looking for a mate or a spouse. Right. Yeah. Hope yeah. deferred makes the heart sick. But the rest of that verse says a promise fulfilled is like a tree of life. Right. Wow. And so what happens is I can see it like you've been given this promise. This dream, if you will. But and it's, it's like, not, when you don't see it transpiring. Yeah, it's not happening. You start <laughs> resorting and taking matters into your own hands, like Abraham and Sarah. And he's like, hey, you know, Sarah was like, hey, take my, my maid servant. Go ahead and have a, you know. Yeah, get, man. You know, yeah. so um, no, you try to take matters into your own hands, yeah. right? And God is like, no, I got you. I got yeah. you. And so, of course, we try to take matters into our own hands by selling drugs, been there, done that. Yeah. Um, I was fortunate enough to, like, nobody ever put a gun in my hand because everybody else right. had, everybody <laughs> They was like, we don't trust you, Dave. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure, man. For sure. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but but been there, done that, man. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And would you say that a lot of that came from those delayed promises? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, feeling like, you know, um, God is not there. You know, it, you, you know it's going to happen, but it's like, man, when is it going to happen? You yeah. know, like, what's taking so long? And, you know, just, just going through that whole phase of life, uh, was 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 very very difficult for me man yeah um and yeah. another time i remember when i was like 23 or 24 you know i was in a shootout and um uh, um I, I can't even tell you where it was it was on the north side though it, at one of those clubs it was one of those clubs she, she know about night moves and stilettos I, she might not but yeah those it was one of those nights um <laughs> 
I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, man, and, and got into a shootout, and, and one of my friends got hit. Mm. And that was the time where I was like, you know what, man? I can't, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, I can't do this no more. And, you know, God had to really reveal some stuff to me, man. And, you know, because I, I grew up in church, but, you know, I also been hurt by church. So, you know, I kind of was kind of yeah, yeah. like, you know what, I'm, man, I'm, I'm going to the street. So I'm, you know, I'm going to do it, you know, this way because, you know, mm -hmm. it look good. It feels good. But man, that wasn't it for me either, bro. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I, I love how honest and transparent you are about the fact that okay, yeah, I did say all right, Jesus come into my life or whatever. I want to make this thing real, but it didn't make the problems go away. He still sent you all. back home to deal with your stuff, yeah. to deal with your mess, right? Um, but uh, talk to me a little bit about that church hurt, though, man, because growing up in the church, um, as you did. I, I didn't come into the church until I was about 18 or 19. So I don't right. have that. Right. I got, I'm first generation Christian. You know, I, I wasn't exposed to, to the church like that. Right. But I've been in church long enough to have been, to have experienced my own form of church hurt where the body has either shunned or shamed me because of either things that I've done or yeah, allegations. Man. You know what I'm saying? Or just misconceptions. It's all, it's all crazy, you know, because it's like, you know, I, I'm, I, I grew up where, you know, they kind of, you can't do this and you can't do that. And and it's like, well, y'all did it. And you know what I'm saying? And it's like they, instead of, you know, teaching us, you know, kind of how not to do it, it's, you know, they just try to force us to, you know, do a certain thing, live a certain way and be a certain way. And, um, you know, we, at the end of the day, you know, we got to deal with the struggles on our own. You know, we had to go through this on our own and God have to, have to deal with me on his own and you know um so yeah man yeah. church is just religion you know kind of just kind of mess me up mm -hmm. i can imagine for you, you know, being on your mind, platform man. too like being in the public eye though yeah like do you ever feel like overly scrutinized by Absolutely, certain man. leaders or just the general population as if like you're somehow holier than thou and you Absolutely. can't step out and do your thing or whatever Absolutely. that may be <laughs> absolutely especially um you know on social media, I try to be like, oh, I ain't got time. But somebody will come in on social media and be like, well, you shouldn't post this. <laughs> and it's like, well, dang, you know, I'm just, po it's a post. I try to to, to live my life, to, you know, a life that's pleasing to God. Come on. So come on. I don't have to, you know, try to, you know, do too much. You know, I, I do I do mess up, but you're not going to hear too much from me, you know. Yeah. See, there, there you go. So when you do mess up, and you ain't got to go into, I don't want, this ain't one of them shows where I'm trying to get the gospel no, for, for the sure. team, right? Oh, but when yeah, you do man. mess up, what do you do? Like, because th this could help me, bro. Like, yeah. honestly, like, we all we all fall, we all fall short of the glory. When you do notice that you mess up, because, I, and I, I, I'll put, put a pen right there for a second, because you mentioned this earlier, too. Um, when you have the Holy Spirit, right, even when you go out there and try to do dirt, like, it's something oh on God. the inside of you. That you can't Evil even enjoy the dirt prison. that you used to enjoy. Evil is always present. You feel me? I it's like, you. man, it, the, the stuff that you used to do without the Holy Spirit, now if you were to try to do it, it's almost like, ah, oh, you feel nasty, you feel dirty. Oh you my feel like, God. It's like that conviction comes upon you. But with that being immediately. said. Immediately. Immediately, bro. Yeah, yeah. But with that being said, when you do fall off, right, and you rec recognize it, how do you hop back on? I just try my best to change, man. Even, even like, you know, even if 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 I do slip, you know, even in my slipping, you know, I, I I just try to, I tell myself, man, you can do so much better than this, and you, man, you even when I, man, I used to get locked up so much, man, yeah, yeah, go to jail for stupid stuff like tickets, you know, just truancy, <laughs> like back in the day, you used to get locked up for any old thing, and, <clears throat> and I was just, you know, during those times, you know, like even during my slipping, I was just like. Like man, you 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 out of there, man. Like yeah, you can do in them better than this, will man. cause you to think and reevaluate some stuff. Yeah, man, right. you can do better, and and you know you should do better. You should want to do better. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah. What aside from from God, what what inspires you to do better or want to do better? Like, what's your why? Literally, you know, the fear of God, bro. Mm -hmm. If if I if I be honest, because um, aside of my kids, yep. you know. There's nothing holding me back from, from getting into it with the man that's finna cut me off. You know, I almost almost clinch my gun every time. 
and, and you know, I have to pray. And even in those moments, you know what I'm Let saying? Let your power fall. Let your power fall. <laughs> because, you know, you know, you know, you never know what the next person is thinking as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just like, I don't even want to be on the road if this is what's going on. I would rather not drive, you know, and stay home, you know, but, you know. You know, like I say, even in my slippage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you in know, kind of, yeah, kind of keep it, keep a prayerful mind. You know, kind of yeah, keep my, yeah. keep my, you know, mind stayed on Jesus, bro. I've learned that when you create those, um, <clears throat> it's almost like those little bumpers at the bowling alley. Yeah. Right. When you, when you kind of pre-install those joints, and that could be anything. Like it could be prayer, it could be a good support system, right. it could be you know daily devotion, whatever the case may be. It don't even have right. to be nothing super spiritual, bro. It could be listening to music, because for me, music is what got me through. Right. right, I have certain songs for certain seasons of my life, yep. and it ain't always scripture. I ain't that dude that's out there like I'm in the wilderness no, sure. praying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I mean, I do that too. Don't get it twisted. But I, I, I'm a music guy. Like I, I have songs for particular seasons in my life to help get me through. That's true. And um, but 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 knowing that, so when I do start the waiver, I've already pre-installed the bumpers. You know right, what I'm saying? Like, right, right. So that way, when I do fall, because like I'm not the best That's bowler. A word. Yeah. Hey, listen, bro. Listen, we, <laughs> I'm a horrible bowler. <laughs> so I know I'm going to throw it in the gutter. Right. I know that already. Like, and knowing that about myself in certain areas of my life, knowing that I'm about to throw it in the gutter, like, I've already got things, like, I have accountability partners. I know that, yeah. that homies are watching me. You know what I'm saying? That they're going to call me and be like, hey, bro, like, how, how your eyes doing? Exactly. Or, or like, what's going on over here? Exactly. You know, I got a financial coach. I got a, a coach coach, you know, yeah. therapy. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, I have all these different bumpers in my life so that way when I do fall short, I don't go into the gutter. Right. You know wow, what I mean? Wow. wow. Um, so yeah, that's a weird boy. That's <laughs> mean right there. <laughs> we going bowling after this, y'all. We going bowling. <laughs> you know what I'm about? And I'm using the bumpers. I don't care. Oh y'all can talk about me if you want to. Um, but with that being said, bro, fast track. And yeah. as you're going through this season of depression, wandering through the wilderness, if you will, I'm sure God is dropping breadcrumbs along yeah. the way. Because yeah. that's a 10 year, oh, it's over a decade's worth of time from that moment you had the encounter. A lot of stuff happened in between there. We're talking about guns, drugs, jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you feel me? Kids, like, right. Kids. Oh, yeah, man, sure. listen. Don't, how many kids you got, bro? Uh, four. Yeah, you like me. I have to count. I'm like, I have five. Yeah. I have five. Once you get more than think, three. Help me, Lord. I think yeah. I got four or five. Pray yeah. for me, y'all. Listen, yeah, man. Listen, we have, we, have, we have five kids, four pregnancies. So we got twins. We had twins. We had oh, right twins. on, right on. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Like he like the math ain't math. Five kids, four pregnancies. Yes, five kids, four I, pregnancies. Listen, There's twins somewhere in the like, mix. Um, Google but, it. I don't know. It's on Google. <laughs> it's online. It's online. <laughs> I ain't gonna ask you any birthdays, dog. I promise I won't. Um, listen, man. Oh my God. Or ages, please. <laughs> I won't. I swear. Yeah. Um, trust me, I get it. Um, but what did? What, how did God bring you? Out of that, because like you said, there was some mistakes made, some things like that happened. How did he mature you and get you to this level? And and I know you're still growing. I was I was just about to say I'm still maturing, and, mm -hmm. and you know, just experience, man, um, is is the biggest thing, man. Um, you know, uh, you know, common sense is 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 amazing to me. I love people with common sense, you know, and common sense tells me you got kids now. <laughs> you know, uh, you might want to. To stop doing certain things, you know, even if even if you don't believe in God, you know, a lot of people don't even believe in God and got common sense, you know, or, or right. is living a life um, that's not, you know, crazy or not disrespecting people and not getting into altercations or whatever it may be, you know, whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, I just I really, really believe in, um, you know, treat a person how you want to be treated. You know what I'm saying? And I think, like I said, just life experiences um, and uh, standing my word, man, a lot of people um, don't know that reading the Bible is so, you know, just, it's a breath of fresh air. You know, even if it's going to that same bro, uh, joint you know, the same scripture verse, uh, chapter you know. Let, hey, let me stop you Listen, right there, bro. bro. The other night, the other night, and I don't care. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a big crybaby, right? Like I cry in the Lion too, King man. when you know yeah. when uh, uh, Mufasa died. Like that's I just am me. A crier, doc. Yes, bro, I'm a crier. So um, <clears throat> y'all don't, y'all don't think nothing of it. If y'all ever see me break out crying, don't be like, oh, Dave, y'all ain't gotta console <laughs> me or nothing. I'm just going through it, <laughs> taking right. my soul to he the laundromat. Right, yeah. <laughs> 
Like, just give me a second. Just give me a second. But the other night, I was reading uh, Psalms 23, right? Super yeah. popular verse. And it's my grandma's favorite ver- verse. My grandma's no longer here. Matter of fact, even though I, I was from a single-parent household, parents were alcoholics, drug addicts, all that type of stuff, it me was too. my grandma... It was my grandma that would take me every weekend. Got her master's in music, used to play for the Houston Symphony, played in church. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So she would come get me. And so I was exposed to God, even though I wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit, right? So like, because of her, I had that exposure. And I always remember, I would ask her, I'd be like, Grandma, like, how, you know, how'd you overcome so much throughout your life? And da 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 She'd be like, Psalms 23, baby, like Psalms 23. She ain't give me nothing else. It, she's like, if you ain't got nothing else, Psalms, Psalms 23. 23. So I was just in a mood the other night, man, and I was laying in my bed, and my son came and jumped in the bed with me. Um, he's 11, and he kind of has this, like, sixth sense. I don't know if it's the autism or the Holy Spirit. It's one of the two. Um, <laughs> and so he hops in the bed with me. He's like, what you reading? And I was just like, I'm reading Psalms 23. He's like, can you read it out loud with me? And so we start reading it out loud. I'm, like, crying as I'm going through <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And he's consoling me, but it's a passage that I know by heart. I could right. recite it right. by heart if I wanted to, but it was something about reading the words on the page and sharing that story with my 11-year-old son and yeah. saying, hey, man, this was your great-grandmother's favorite right. scripture, right. her favorite song. And, um, and I heard him telling uh, his sister that the other day. I don't know if he was talking about me, like wow. I saw dad crying, or if he was just telling her about the scripture. Right. Well, one of the two, I got him talking about the word. Right. Um, but anyway, yes, bro, I feel you. It don't yeah. always have to be looking for buried treasure, you know, because when we hear pastors use these multiple syllable words, right? right. Um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they go to the Greek and the Hebrew. Right, 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 right. Um, and that's cool. I love it. Absolutely. I love hermeneutics, Absolutely. all that stuff. Absolutely. But sometimes, bro, you just got to keep it simple. Yeah. And God is cool with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what verses are you rocking with that get you through? Jeremiah, man, uh, mm. 29 and 11, bro. That's probably my... my I could see that for you. Yeah. Even yeah. in those dark seasons. You, I promise, man. Yeah. That thing... I, I had to keep telling myself, he knows the plans, you know, he has for you, plans to... I had to keep telling myself that, like, yeah. don't trip, it's going to be all right. God got a plan for you, you know, just keep walking, just keep singing, keep reading, you know, keep reading your Bible, keep trying, you know, and God got a plan for you, man, seriously. Because mind you, you're telling yourself that in the midst of those dark seasons. Yeah. That's what faith is, though. Absolutely. You feel me? Yeah, seeing it, but not exactly. Yeah, because there's no physical evidence right now of you becoming a singer. You were walking in the middle of the night in Greenspoint. To Jack in the Box. Right. <laughs> There's no evidence at this right. moment. I, I ain't picking up the phone and calling Kirk. You can do that, right? Right now? Can you call Kirk? Yeah. Uh, all right, we got to talk after this. You want me to call? <laughs> we going to FaceTime. I can call Kirk. a lot of people right now, and that's crazy. Man. <laughs> I'm just playing, bro. No, it's but, weird, though. So, but back never, then, yeah, man. there was right. no evidence. None. But you, what you're telling me is you had to keep And I didn't think, yourself. I was like, man, everybody can sing. <laughs> I didn't know people would be like, you know, man, you, you... One of the greatest, man. I, I wasn't thinking like that. And, you know, I really thought to myself, like, man, you're going to be another loser, you know? Like, everybody, your daddy losing, you, you know? So I just really felt like that was, was what was next for me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So so do you remember, was there a moment, a shift, aside from that moment, but after that, like, as you got older, it was like, okay, cool, I kind of made it? Man, um, Yeah. When James did the I Trust You record, it kind of changed my whole view yeah, on music. I I, had, I was doing music with Jumpy Key as well, but, you know, uh, with James being right here uh, in Houston, you know, kind of doing the same thing that Pastor Key was doing, and I was seeing it for myself, that really changed my, you know, my, my outlook on it and kind of made me know that this is really what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you got to invest in yourself. You have to, you know, uh, you know, all that good stuff. I really just start caring about it. And, um, you know, that, that was the thing that changed it for me, man. And, um, of course, I started getting calls. People started calling me, man. And I was like, hey, I'm coming. And they was, <laughs> I remember my first, one of my first, uh, Engagements, man, was with Bishop Paul Morton. Yep, yep. He gave me my first fifteen hundred dollars, man. And mm. when it's he amazing gave me what fifteen hundred would do. Man, that did it. Look, 
That was don't, it. Don't hey, don't act like y'all nice and bougie now. That like was it. like oh, fifteen hundred. Like y'all remember when fifteen hundred dollars was a lot of money. That was it. Stop though. playing. Y'all remember them days? We like, like oh like man, fifteen hundred dollars would change your life. We did like a week of. Uh, <laughs> We did like we did like a week of uh, rehearsals and yeah. I seen that fifteen hundred dollar check. I was like, "What? <laughs> oh yeah, this is what's going on, Marcus. <laughs> Say this is it for me. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> Sign me up for the jubilee. Man. It's it's some evidence <laughs> on this thing. Like we didn't turn faith into evidence now. For real, man. No, that's funny, bro. <laughs> that's funny, man. All right, I'm, I'm gonna hit you with one more question. And then I'm going to open it up, see if anybody else wants to ask anything before we bounce. Sure. Um, I ask everybody this. I've kind of shifted it over the, the months. Um, I was doing some real introspective work. Shout out to Gene Moore. Um, it's my brother. Yeah, man. My brother. And make sure y'all check out his album, too. Um, but uh, I was doing some, some self-evaluation and just analyzing my life and all that good stuff. And so a, a friend of mine was like, hey, do you have a personal mission? Right. And I've done consulting work for businesses, you know, at the at the radio station and consulting with other entrepreneurs. And one of the biggest things I'm always like, OK, well, what's your mission? Right. What's your vision? What's your values? Those are things that you need to to not just achieve success, but sustain it. Right. What's your what's your mission? So I started doing that for my own personal life. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, what is my mission on this earth? Right. Starts combing through scriptures, right. analyzing my values, integrity, honesty. Right. Da, 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 da. I came up with something real simple, like love God, love people. Live fully, die empty, right? My question to you is this. Why are you here? What is Zacardi Cortez's mission? Um, people, man, you know, mm. I, I, I honestly feel that we all have the same purpose, and it's each other. You know, it's, it's, it's people, man. Um, Christ died for us, man. You know what I'm saying? And um, his mission has to be our mission, you know. Um, his mission was was us. His mission was people. Mm. He came literally to die, and um, so my mission is gonna always be people, man. You know, um, God's people. Um, um, you know, my brothers and sisters, my family, my mom. You know, making sure she she get her bills paid on time. You know what I'm saying? That that's really my mission. You know, to be to be what God called me to be. You know, and and um, that's just to be a servant for his people, man, in whatever way I can. Um, you know, I, like I say, I always try to do as much as I can for everybody. And uh, I, I really believe that that's what God has called me to do. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, when, when I do do that, you know, when I, that's, this is how I know because when I, when I'm living the life that's pleasing to him and even if I only do it for a day or two, it's how that day or two goes for me. You know what I'm saying? That makes me know, like, man, I got to do this every day. Come on. And, you know, God is going to make a way every day or God is going to see it through every day. And, you know, um, yeah, man, I, I think that's that's really what it is for me, you know, yeah, trying to. Yeah, because he ain't never let me down. Never he ain't let me never down. Never let me down. Never really let me down, me. man. Well, listen, guys, uh, Cardi, I truly, truly appreciate you. Before we bounce, sure, though, bro. before we bounce, I wanted to open it up. Never done this before. Like I said, man, we inviting you into our personal space. But if you came with a question or if there's something on your mind that you want to ask, um, Zakardi, don't ask me nothing. Um, <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm just, <laughs> this is all about you, bro. This is all about you. But uh, let me know. We can get this mic passed around to you um, as uh, we're waiting on these questions to fill in. I want to ask, um, is the food good? Yeah. Latoria. Oh, you ain't got to ask me How the me food that. taste? <laughs> oh, listen. Uh -huh. The lamb chops is, is where it's at. The oxtails, if you haven't had the oxtails, make sure you grab that. Take some of those to home to go. Um, uh, the, the new... the new. <laughs> he looked like he, the, he done let the power fall in there. What was that, some cornbread? No. Y'all holding out. Y'all holding out. I didn't know he had some banana pudding. Uh, what? Bro, you're going to have to repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my okay. God. <laughs> While he is over here, a banana pudding um, cookie, salivating. Okay, cool. Uh, good evening. So I just had a question uh, for both of you. My name is Deborah Esther. I'm a local artist as well. So for the young artists, those of us who are still coming up, what advice do you have for us? Uh, keep going. You know what I'm saying. Keep 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 grinding. Believe in yourself. Believe in your sound. Trust your voice. You know what I'm saying? And um, 
Yeah, I like that. Trust your voice. I need to get that on the shirt. <laughs> Trust your voice. Seriously, though. Um, because that 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 really is going to determine, you know, the outcome of how you feel about your music. And that's that's what's most important, you know. Yeah. Um, if nobody else listen to your music, you know, send it to the 10 people that are listening and trust your voice. Trust what you got to say is something that need to be heard, you know, and uh, make sure if, if, if it's, you know, a lot of people um, want to be writers and want to be the greatest singer or whatever. For, for me, um, somebody wrote my first three number ones. And if that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. Just because I can sing don't mean that I got the, the best song for me or the best, you know, I got the best sound for me. You know, I got to trust in the process, trust in everybody and trust in, you know, trust your voice. I need to get that on the shirt. Trust yeah, your voice. You, you do need to get that on the shirt. I'll say this too. Obviously, I'm not an artist um, or anything like that, but I have worked behind the scenes with a lot of artists and, and watched a lot of folks uh, break into the scene. Even as a DJ, helped break records back in the day. Um, <clears throat> I would say the biggest thing is going to be consistency, right? Consistently showing up, consistently putting out content, right? And put it out and don't even look for the likes. Don't even look for the follows and the subscriptions. Just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Make a commitment to yourself exactly, that yeah. for the next two to five years, I'm going to do this exactly. for free. I'm going to do this for free, right? I'm, and, and show up to all the shows, meet all the people you can meet, shake all the hands. And I'll say this too, and this goes for anybody, not just artists, but support other people, right? For sure. Show love. For sure. if, if your career ain't popping... Support somebody else's career that's popping. And I guarantee you that reciprocity, that law of reciprocity, reciprocity will kick in. You feel me? Because you reap what you sow. So if you sow love, you'll reap love. You, you sow support, you'll reap support. So I'll say just keep, keep being consistent and support. And find some people to support that's good, though. You know what I'm saying? Don't just be supporting anybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I literally been singing since I was five, y'all. Like five. I'm 37 now. I, I started singing when I was five years old. And I mean, before then, I was even singing, you know, rehearsing because by, by the time I started singing, you know, we were singing four or five songs <laughs> a night. So I was already singing at four years old. And like I say, it's still hard. I still, you know, got to work my butt off. Still got to show up to radio events for free, Marcus, just to get my song played. You know, it, it's not, I'm not doing it. They're not playing my song just because I can sing. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, that's a very good man. Hold I up. That's a very good point. I have done five free gigs to get this, you know what I'm saying? Yo. This is how I go, man. Yo. And, you know, you got to trust the ground. You got to trust the process and trust God, man, because he, he's the one. Yeah, there's no entitlement in this game. Like, that entitlement, that, that gets shut down real, oh, real quick. Sure. Um, but, yeah, I, I could speak to that all day Man. long. The free, the, the, the power of free. Um, <laughs> leverage it, though. Don't just be selling yourself out here free. <laughs> no, for sure. I, I've heard somebody once tell me that uh, it's okay to let folks use you, just don't let them misuse you. Exactly. All right? Wow. It's okay to let them use you, wow. just don't let them misuse you. Because wow. Jesus even did it. Jesus said, they didn't take my life. I gave I it. I laid it down, right. I laid it down. Right. Like, they ain't misused me. I, I, they were a part of my plan. So anyway, that's, that's my sermon for the day. Boy, uh, you can, boy, you got, boy. <laughs> I'm coming to your, ch Look, I'm coming to your listen, church. We still saving this mug. All right, Ramesh Nicole, my homie, has one of the hottest podcasts in the world. Um, and I mean that. And them dope earrings. I like the mirror rings. <laughs> um, so hello, everyone. My name is Ramesh Nicole. I first want to thank the both of you for being so vulnerable um, regarding your mental health journey. As someone who too was diagnosed with anxiety and depressive mood disorder, y'all know that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. I do want to ask the both of you a question um, and you all can do rock, paper, scissors to determine who's gonna go first. Um, how are you maintaining that? Because as we elevate, the pressure comes. And I one thing today um, that the Lord, the Holy Spirit really revealed to me was that even through the the resistance, right? Um, excellence is going to require resistance. So how are you maintaining, shifting those thoughts and not going back to that place that we all were once at one place? So how are you guys navigating that? Um, it's not a challenge in my mind to go back to that place because I'm not even thinking about it. I'm not even 
I'm not even there no more. You know, that it's not me. It never was me. You know, I, I, and, and the reason why I'm out of that now, you know, first of all, is because of Jesus. You know, and when you really figure out and, you know, like you say, what your purpose is. Yeah, yeah. And you really, um, man, my, my daddy was on drugs for like 20 years, like four or five years before I was even born. And, and 20 years after that, and he told me, he was like, son, the only way I'll be able to get off of this, he told me out of his mouth, is Jesus. And that's the only, literally the only out we got. <laughs> that's the only way out yeah. we have, and it's like really trusting in Jesus. And I know that sounds easier said than done. Um, but for me, I'm an easy dude. And like I say, I really believe in common sense. I really believe that if they outside shooting, don't go outside and get shot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so I, I just, I don't want to go back. You know, I won't go back, you know, to the way I used to be. Because his love has, he. Yeah, 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 yeah. You no. know what I'm saying? God's love really changed my way of thinking, my heart. You know, my, my you know, just my walk and everything. It, it got to be. It got to be all God. You know what I'm saying? My socks say that. Shout out to Nicole. But yeah, man, for real. Now, I don't want to go back. I don't want to do man. Deal with I'm, stuff. Yeah, do y'all remember the, the most brokest? I mean, I, I don't look like I have anybody in here that used to be broke, do I? Anybody? Anybody? Uh, man, not ashamed listen, to say man. that they used to be broke back in listen. the day? All right. So can somebody tell me what is the brokest meal you ever had growing up? Because I know eggs and rice and cheese. Eggs that sounds like a Brazilian and cheese. meal. Feel, uh, right, bro. Oh, ramen. Say, hold up. I still eat ramen. Don't play. See, yeah, and throw some sausage. See, 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 now hold on. That sounds real. See, that's see, not, see, that actually sounds That's a real sandwich. <laughs> no, that's a real sandwich. No, bro. But listen, for me, yes, ramen, cereal with no milk. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever we had. But y'all remember, like, um, look at somebody say nothing. <laughs> like syrup sandwich. Anybody ever had a syrup sandwich? Yes, bro. No meat, right? Just syrup sandwich yes, or just sir. yes, bro. Just catch up. I'm telling just you right sauce. now. I didn't try them all. I am not broke no more. I'm not rich, but I'm not broke. I don't want to eat dude. syrup sandwiches no more. I, I, I remember what they taste like, and I have had the greasy spoon lamb chops. Right, right. I'm not going back. I'm not. <laughs> he said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes, and yes. once he delivered me, it's like, I don't want that no more. Like, give me the lamb chops every single every time I come time. here, Max. Don't play. Give, give me, me the oxtails. Man. You feel me? Yes, I don't want no more bologna sandwiches. <laughs> I still eat ramen, though. Yeah, I will still eat ramen. That is a staple. Ramen is in my... <laughs> I had that yesterday. Don't yeah, play man, with the ramen. Um, but yes, that for me, that's the thing. Like, I tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And, and I trust that it gets better. Um, yeah. I also know that, that there was some very specific tools that he gave me, um, you know, like therapy, um, good support system, good friends. Like he helped weed out a lot of negativity of my life. I, I had to, and I had to be honest with myself, bro. Like I had to literally sit there and do a self-reflective evaluation of my life and say, okay, here are the things and the habits that I have. All right, this isn't helping me get to my goal. You know, this isn't helping me get to my goal. That's not helping me get to my goal. Let me stop lying. Let me stop looking at pornography. Let me stop doing this. Let me right, stop dog. doing that. Like, no, listen, like none of it. Let me, let me, let me, change, let me switch up my diet, right? Um, right. Like even like. Bro, I'll give you the most practical one of all. Let me get some sleep. Right. You know no, what I'm saying? Seriously, dog. Let me go to bed. <laughs> I take naps now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I took a nap. DJ will tell you. Before we got here, he was like, hey, bro, I'm running a little late. I got to go pick up the kids from school. I was like, bet. That'll allow me to get a 30-minute nap in real quick. Right. <laughs> he called me when it was time. He was like, hey, you up? I was like, yeah, I'm up. That nap did just what it, what it needed me to do. Right. So I take naps. I call my partners when I'm feeling down. Like it ain't all, like I told you earlier, it ain't all just like I'm, I'm in the scriptures and, and I, trust me, I do that, too. Right. You know what I'm saying? I guard I guard my heart. And, and that was one of the, the memory verses yesterday was guard your heart. And um, and you think about it, the, we in the playoffs right now. Right. It's got to be hard guarding LeBron. It's got to be hard guarding the basket from Steph Curry making it. Nah, bro. You know, I'm, I'm H Town through and through. Like, I'm, oh, I don't care who in the playoffs. Like, yeah, I know. I know. But it's got to be hard guarding those dudes, right? You got to think about it. The enemy is just as swift. 
He ain't finna just lay back and let you excel. Bro, you got some powerful songs. Right. All that did was put a target on your back. Right. Absolutely. You know, you think he just finna let you go out there? Exactly. Like, and so like what she said, when as you elevate, it's like, you know, new le new levels, new devils, right? Yeah. And it gets it does get a little bit harder. It but, does get hard, you know. But you learn from the Absolutely. I take stuff. Different, like I said, I've been spoiled all my life, so <laughs> you know, you know, literally, and not even with material things. Just you know, I don't want to go to school, mama, and you know, not even sick. Just okay, well, stay home. You know, stuff like that, man. That when really, you know, somebody should have said, "Boy, get up out of here and go." You know, and you know, man, I, I just like I say, we're different, but you know, I thank God that you know I'm able to do. I've been traveling since I was. Young, 14, 15, I was traveling young, so I kind of got to experience stuff at an early age, and um, I'm grateful for that, man, because that really helps my mental as well, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, because I'm so, I'm, I was almost an old man even when I was young, you know, I had been through so much in my life, and um, I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful for that, because that, that really keeps me humble, it keeps my mind, you know, it keeps me, you know, at a place where I don't, like I said, I don't want to go back yeah, yeah. You know, I don't want to be broke again. I don't want to eat bologna sandwiches Come no on. more. Listen, shout out to Toby and the Wigway. We ain't broke no more. Man. We, we ain't broke no more. Well, guys, listen, thank y'all so much, man, life. for coming out, for showing Nobody love. Right. Hopefully you guys were, were blessed, inspired, encouraged, and motivated in some form or fashion. And hopefully, 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 you guys were fulfilled by the Greasy Spoon. Let's give it up for the Greasy Spoon, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't, Say yeah. make sure... Make sure you go grab yourself something to eat. Don't leave without grabbing something. You will be blessed because I of promise. it. I'm, um, but anyway, that's the wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I want to take pictures with each and every one of y'all before we bounce. Zacardi, how can we keep up with you if they're not already rocking with you? Man, hit your boy up. Uh, social media and all that good stuff. I'm Cardi Key V underscore on Instagram. Zacardi Cortez on Facebook. I got a few pages on Facebook. Go to all of them and just type <laughs> Zacardi Cortez and you're going to find me one of them. Um, um, yeah, man, all that great stuff, man. And, you know, I'll be, uh, going to the Steelers this year. Hopefully I take home a, a few or one or two. No, come come on, Marcus. Come on, yes, man. Yes, bro. Marcus up next, dog. I promise, bro. Listen, listen. That's a wrap, man. <laughs> Cardi, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. We have just broke down the breakthrough with Houston's own from Acres Homes. Let's give Acres it up to Cardi. Fo -fo. Cortez, Fofo. -fo. <laughs> that's a wrap. <laughs>